never in my life met an individual who is verbally and in other ways so professed racial hatred as Mr. Mays. I don't know if she's racist, but I know she Eric's. She Eric's Mays's, if it's such a word. By now, you've probably seen videos of Flint Councilman Eric Mays going back and forth with other council members. He's referred to them as evil white people and handkerchief-headed Negroes, but why is he so mad? In short, they're provoking him, and full videos show them making fun of his teeth, diction, and refusing to conduct meetings as long as he's in the building. In April of 2022, they had him arrested for disorderly conduct. During COVID, he was frequently removed from Zoom calls. He's had to sue the city for violating his rights, but the full story is so much more than that. He's fed up, and he should be. Mays is claimed to be a victim of targeted harassment from elected officials in Flint. As crazy as it sounds, it might be true. It all started in 2012. The city of Flint, Michigan sold Genesee Towers to a company called Uptown Reinvestment Corporation for just one dollar. The sale was controversial because the city had essentially forced the owner to sell on claims that the building was in terrible shape. I've never been in the towers so I can't tell you if they were as bad as the city claims but I can tell you that many people in the area felt the city had exaggerated just how bad the buildings were. Once the city finally got ownership of the buildings in 2010 there were no actual plans for it. That's when Uptown Reinvestment comes in and decides they're just gonna blow it up. And NBC 25 has learned the 750 $50,000 the city has pledged toward the demolition of Genesee Towers comes from the same pool of money community development block grant funds often used for neighborhood cleanup and demolition. When did they decide to do it? On December 22nd, in the snow right before Christmas, forcing business owners in the area to close their stores during the height of shopping without any real warning. So where does Eric Mays come into this? Eric Mays is requesting Flint District Court to order a halt in the demolition of the towers. They led the public to believe that they had had done all of their due diligence and they were ready to knock down our $8 million to $9 million asset. Well, the owners of Genesee Towers, the Capitol Theater, and Flint Turner Buildings would receive special tax breaks from Flint for those properties and would also not have to pay taxes for 12 years on any other developments they had in the city. In 2012, he's arrested for protesting this because they would never offer these incentives to people in black areas of the city. Before being arrested, he stated, you're gonna know as of today that we from the north side to the east side, the neighborhoods, we're not gonna sit idle anymore. This is a day of change. That prompted his run for councilman, and he won. He also sued the city for the sale. He was basically mocked by Judge Jeffrey Nithercutt, who stated, you need to go work on the budget, Mr. Mays. I don't see anything that the court would need to decide. That building was torn down. It's a pile of rubble that's being hauled away. Mayor Sheldon Neely, who was a councilman at the time, poured more fuel on the fire, calling it, quote, a waste of time and money. Since then, it's been more targeted harassment of Councilman Mays. He's repeatedly implicated Neely as the ringleader of the harassment, but what exactly is the harassment he speaks of? And so now I'll hope that the city attorney, the special prosecutor, you know, I've been penalized, I've paid fees, I've been on tether for months, I've served more than a penalty. In 2014, he was arrested. They said Mays was drunk, high, driving with four flat tires the wrong way on the highway after a hit and run. Then they added in resisting arrest, refusal to be fingerprinted, disorderly conduct. Mays chooses to defend himself. He's not a lawyer. The evidence just didn't make sense. Nobody actually saw him in the car. Nobody witnessed the car driving up the highway. He was drunk and he had a bag of weed, but they said he was in a hit and run and had no evidence of a hit and run even happening. The judge is annoyed with Mays, but throws out several charges. The jury acquits or doesn't reach a verdict on the others. A different judge comes in and reverses the ruling because he felt the first judge shouldn't have allowed Mays to represent himself. So Mays ends up with 72 days in jail, despite the fact that he officially wasn't found guilty of anything. In 2017, just before the election, Mays was arrested again, this time for willful neglect, because he had pawned his work laptop three times in 2015. In reality, he admitted on camera that he pawned it nine times because he needed money to pay his bills. He pled no contest and still got 70% of the vote in the election that year. They had that man walking around with two house arrest bracelets. I've seen my fair share of people on house arrest, 
never have I seen two ankle monitors at the same time. So the issue ain't who said hello or uh, the hell with you and y'all getting put out of the That's not the issue. The issue is no talking should turn into violent physical contact. That's the issue. On the night of February 12, 2020, Eric Mays and some friends went to Rude's Bar and Grill, a popular spot in Flint. They ate wings, had papaya juice, sang karaoke, played the lottery. Deputy Chief of Staff Duvaro Murdoch didn't like what Mays had said about Mayor Sheldon Neely winning the election and decided to approach him about it. Mays said he didn't want to talk politics that night, so Murdoch decided to talk about Mays missing teeth. Mays laughs and says, eh, I didn't brush too well. Murdoch doesn't like being laughed at, so he slaps Mays. May says, please, don't touch the councilman without permission. People laugh at Murdoch, and that just makes him angrier. Murdoch slams Mays on the ground and beats a retired old man. Police come, and Mays goes to the hospital, where it's revealed he has several bruised bones in his face. Murdoch just kept drinking that night. No charges were ever filed, but Murdoch would later resign from his job after being caught drunk driving. So, why is Eric Mays angry? Because he's been fighting for his people and got no real changes. Elected officials are on the news saying he's a scam artist, drug addict. Early in 2023, Council President Ali Herkenroder made a joke and laughed, then accused him of gaslighting when he asked her to repeat herself. To which she responded with, go find a dictionary. But she's gaslighting him at that moment, as if nobody else saw and heard her laugh when there is a microphone in front of her and a camera on her. What did you That's just say? What did you say? You're not going to allow me to do what? I mean, you laugh and I'm trying to hear what you're saying. Okay, I think that you can hear me just fine. But for the record, I said I will not allow you to gaslight this community. Gaslight? Or, yes, sir. I suggest you look it up. We will continue with this appeal. We'll deal with this after the appeal. Watch yourself. As a reminder on the appeal. Because I can use that. Excuse me, Mr. Mays, you are out of order. When you dog me out and interrupt me and tell me I'm a gaslighter, I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. People support him because he really does advocate for the people in his ward. When other politicians, including President Obama, were toasting Flint water like it was clean, he said, mm, don't drink that. And when the city wanted to settle for $600 million, he said, hell no, because nobody knew the long-term effects. It might fix the pipes, but lawyers would get a cut off top, and citizens would barely get anything. The city still took the settlement, and as I typed this in April of 2023, the citizens have not received a dime. A little miss Flint is still out here raising money for water filters. People vote for him because he's in the poorest district with the least funding and the most crime, but nobody else is standing up for them. And he isn't afraid to call bullshit when the city does things like decide to drop charges over the Flint water crisis, or they want to do quick payouts to make sexual harassment scandals in the police department disappear with one person taking the fall. Time and time again, his constituents are hit the hardest and nobody else in Flint seems to care about them, except Eric Mays and Little Miss Flint. He will hold that seat until she's old enough to run for it if she wants it. Yes, the clips of Eric Mays can be really funny with no context. Still, it's important to remember Eric Mays is mad for a good reason. The people he represents are mad and they have been for a very long time. They repeatedly side with Mays and vote for him because he is just like them. He's not a lawyer, didn't come from a wealthy family, he's not a doctor, he worked for GM until retirement. He's been a community activist in the first war for 30 years. They know him. They go to church with him, the same bars, maybe even the same weed man, but they know him. He lives there in the same conditions they do. He doesn't disappear until election time. They've never had to investigate if he actually lives in Flint. He's put in the work when nobody else has. Agree with his positions or not, we need more politicians like Eric Mays who want to hold those that make backroom deals that leave their constituents and the rain accountable. Eric Mays is mad, but we should all be mad.